Now, all things are possible with God, but God doesn't violate your will. He doesn't violate your will. Only demons do that. And God cannot lie. It's impossible for him to lie. So even though God can do anything, he's talking about anything good, anything that's consistent with his character. Hallelujah. Number one is your heart. That means your attention. God wants your attention. Give me your heart. Give me your attention. That's something that David gave to God. Now, Josiah also gave that to God. How many of you agree with that? Well, you can study about them for yourself. Let's go on. After all, the Bible says he turned his heart to God more than anybody else. Come on. He did. So, number two, your presence. That I cannot fully tell about Josiah. Your presence. There's a great difference between your presence and your words. David gave God his presence. Let me tell you a little about that. The man Josiah turned to God according to the law of Moses. David turned to God beyond the law of Moses. The law required the man to pray and offer sacrifices in the morning and in the evening. David did more than that. Are you hearing me? David, the Bible says, was zealous for the house of God. David gave God his presence. You give God your presence. David was zealous for the house of God, for the presence of God. And he proved his zeal for God by his presence. Now, I'm showing you these things because this would let you know the difference. Why, why does God... Look, God made everybody. And you know, the, the people who say, well, whatever God wants to do, he can do with my life. But there are things that must be available for God to do with your life, what he would like to do. Otherwise, why does he send us? Praise God. I said your presence, number one, your heart, your attention. If God can get your attention, he can do anything with your life. For example, he got Moses' attention by setting the bush on fire. So Moses said, I will step aside to see this strange sight. And when he did, God called from out of the fire. You remember that? Always God wants your attention. He says, my son, give me your heart and let your eyes observe my ways. Your presence is the next thing. Now, from the Old Testament into the New Testament, God has always designated special areas for special manifestations of his presence. Now, God is everywhere, but the manifested presence of God is not everywhere. Now, don't you ever forget that. God is everywhere. The presence of God is everywhere, but the, manifest, the manifested presence of God is not everywhere. You get that? The manifested presence of God is not everywhere. In the Old Testament, for example, he said, when you go to worship and to give an offering unto the Lord, he said, don't put it everywhere you see or everywhere you find or every altar that you find. He said, you shall take it to the place that shall be chosen in those days. In the New Testament, Paul tells the same thing. He says, when you come together. 
See, each one of us is the house of God. Each one of us is a temple of God. But then he calls the church the ground and pillar of truth and tells us that there is a structure for the church. It's not every meeting place of believers that is a church. But sometimes we don't get to know this. Just because believers are gathered, oh, of course, where two or three are gathered together in my name, they are mine. What up? If I'm there alone, he's still with me? Come on, talk to me now. So, God has always let us know from the Old Testament and into the New Testament to the present day, let us know that his manifested presence is not everywhere. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So when David said, I was glad when they said, let us go to the house of the Lord. He said, I was glad when they said so. Going to the house of God, coming together with God's people like this is very essential in your life. It's one of the ways that you make yourself that man or that woman that God can influence his life and his destiny. There are, there are lots of Christians who do not think that they need to go to church. They go once in a while when they choose to. Granted that everybody who goes to church is not necessarily doing right. But everybody who doesn't is doing wrong. Hey, come on. <laughs> hey, come on. Did you get that? It's true that not everybody who goes to church is pleasing God, but everybody who doesn't go is displeasing God for sure, according to the Bible. See? So, there are things that we must do on our part that can ensure the brightness of our lives. The brightness of our future. The God kind of success for our lives. Your presence. Does God have your presence? When you spend time to pray, you're giving God your presence. So a lot of times we talk about the presence of God. We live in his presence. What we ought to wonder about is our presence. Do we give him our presence? When you withdraw from everybody else and spend time to pray, you are giving him your attention, you are giving him your presence. Are you hearing this? It doesn't stop there. There's a third one. The third one is your love. Remember, Josiah was perfect according to the law of Moses. He made no mistakes. David made a lot of mistakes. But there was something David had that Josiah didn't have. That made the difference. Your love. That's the third one. You know, we read something a moment ago, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 13, where it tells us that these three abide, faith, hope, love. Then it says, the greatest of these is love. Faith is a great virtue for any Christian. It says, these three abide, these three remain. When everything else is down, these three will stand. Faith is a great virtue. Hope is a great virtue. Love is another great virtue. But then it tells us that the greatest of them is love. Why is love the greatest? Your love for God is what goes beyond the law 
of Moses. Your love for God will harmonize all the other important virtues that you may ever have. 